Grammy award-winning singer songwriter Taylor Swift made a splash in the country music world in 2006 and has gone on to become one of the top acts in popular music. Musician Taylor Swift was any renown as a country music singer by the age of 16. Early hits like Love Story and You Belong With Me appealed to country and pop fans alike and helped fuel the multi-platinum success of her albums, including the Grammy winning Fearless 2008. Swift continued to top the charts with her 2014 studio efforts 1989 which featured the number one singles Shake It Off and Blank Space and won Grammys for Album of the Year and Best Pop Vocal Album. Her follow-up albums Reputation 2018 and Lover 2019 also achieved immense commercial success. Early Life Taylor Allison Swift was born on December 13, 1989 in Reading, Pennsylvania. Swift spent her early years on her family Christmas tree farm in nearby Wyoming. Her grand mother has been a professional opera singer and Swift soon followed in her musical footsteps. By the age of 10, Swift was singing at a variety of local events, including fairs and contests. She sang the Star Spangled Banner at a Philadelphia 76ers basketball game at the age of 11 and began writing her own songs and learning guitar at age 12. To pursue her music career, Swift often visited Nashville, Tennessee, the country music capital. There she co-wrote songs and tried to land a recording contract. Noting her dedication, Swift and her family moved to nearby Hedisonville, Tennessee in an attempt to further Swift's career. Country music career A stellar performance at the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville helped Swift get a contract with Scott Bachetta's Big Machine Records. She released her first single, Tim McGray, in 2006 and the song became a top 10 hit on the country charts. It also appeared on her self-titled debut album in October of that same year, which went on to sell more than 5 million copies. More popular singles soon followed, including Our Song, a number one country music hit, Teardrops on the Guitar, Picture to Burn, and Should Have Said No were also successful tracks. Swift also received critical praise for her debut efforts. She won the Horizon Award from the Country Music Association CMA and the Academy of Country Music ACM Award for Top New Female Vocalist in 2007. Swift next released Sounds of the Season, the Taylor Swift Holiday Collections that year. Her renditions of Silent Night and Santa Baby were modest hits on the country charts. Fearless in 2008, Swift was nominated for a Grammy in the Best New Artist category and won other accolades including the ACM's Female Vocalist of the Year Award. Around the same time, Swift released her next album, Fearless, which hit the top of both the country and pop charts and stayed there for 11 weeks. By the end of the year, Swift had become the highest selling country artist of 2008. 2009 VMAs and Kanye West. Swift netted several awards for her work on Fearless, including Video of the Year and Female Video of the Year for Love Story at the 2009 CMT Music Awards. That year, Swift also won the MTV Video Music Awards Best Female Video for You Belong to Me, making her the first country music star to earn a VMA. The win stirred controversy when rapper Ye, formerly Kanye West, leaped to the stage during Swift's speech, took the microphone, and declared that the Arrow and B singer Beyonce should have won Swift's award. The stunned Swift was unable to make her acceptance speech and West was removed from the show. When Beyoncé accepted her award for Best Video of the Year later in the show, she also called Swift to the stage to finish her speech. West later apologized to Swift privately and made a public apology on the Jay Leno show. Speak Now and Red Swift soon became an even hotter commodity. Her concert ticket began selling out in less than two minutes, and she also made her second appearance on the comedy show Saturday Night Live, this time as both the host and musical guest. Additionally, in 2010, she became the youngest artist to win the Grammy Awards for Album of the Year for Fearless. That year, Swift released a new album, Speak Now, which featured the hit song, Mean, Ours, and Sparks Fly. 
The album was a success, debuting at number one on the Billboard 200 charts and selling more than one million copies in its first week. She followed with Red 2012, which featured the hit single We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together and also topped one million in its first week of sales. Philanthropic efforts and more accolades. Swift was ranked Forbes magazine highest paid celebrity under 30 in 2012, beating out Justin Bieber, Rihanna and Lady Gaga with earnings of $57 million. The following year, the musician shared some of her fortune to help others, funding the $4 million Taylor Swift Education Center at the Country Music Hall of Fame in Nashville. The facility opened with three classrooms, a learning lab, and a space dedicated to exhibits for children. In an interview with CMT Hot 20 Countdown, she explained that music education is really such an important part of my life. My life changed so completely when I discovered writing my own songs and playing guitar and that can't necessarily be taught to you in the school because there are not enough hours in the day. In 2013, Swift was also honored with the CMA Pinnacle Award for her achievement as a country music performer and for her positive impact on country music. According to the CMA website, she picked up two other wins for her collaboration with Tim McGray and Keith Urban at the CMA Awards ceremony held that November. Swift's winning streak continued at the American Music Awards as she picked up the AMA Award for Artist of the Year for the third consecutive time among other wins. With her next effort, Swift seemed to step further away from her country music roots. She released 1989 in October 2014. Shake It Off proved to be one of the catchiest tracks of the year, reaching the top of the pop charts, and she immediately followed with a second chart topping single, Blank Space. In an age of low album sales, 1989 moved more than 1.2 million copies in its first week, making Swift the first artist to top the 1 million mark in opening week sales for three albums. Swift continued to play with her public persona with the track Bad Blood, which featured Kendrick Lamar in video for the song, which later debuted at the 2015 B-Board Music Awards and doubles in the Noah action shots. She appears as a tough cutthroat character called Catastrophe. Swift recruited other celebrities to appear in the video as well, including Kelly Claus, Cindy Crawford, and Lena Doham. In February 2016, Swift opened up the 58th Annual Grammy Awards with another track from 1989, Out of the Woods, having received pre-telecast awards for Best Music Video and Best Pop Vocal Album. Later in the evening, Swift won another Grammy for Album of the Year, making music history as the first woman to win the award twice. In what was seen as a sharp rebuke to a new West song in which he took credit for her fame, Swift used her acceptance speech to issue an empowerment statement. I want to say to all the young women out there, there are going to be people along the way who will try to undercut your success or take credit for your accomplishments or your fame, she said. But if you just focus on the work and you don't let those people sidetrack you, someday when you get where you are going, you will look around and you will know that it was you and the people who loved you who put you there. And that will be the greatest feeling in the world, filled with Katy Perry. Swift and Katy Perry, who both dated John Mayer, ended their friendship with Perry, allegedly tried to poach some of Swift's tall dancers. Her feud with Perry was her muse for bad blood. For years, I was never sure if we were friends or not, Swift told Rolling Stone in 2014. She would come up to me at award shows and say something and walk away. And I would think, are we friends or did she just give me the harshest insult of my life? Then, according to Swift, Perry crossed a line. She did something so horrible, Swift says. I was like, oh, we are just straight up enemies and it was not even about a guy. It had to do with business. She basically tried to sabotage an entire arena tour. She tried to hire a bunch of people out from under me and I am surprisingly non-confrontational. You would not believe how much I hate conflicts. So now I have to avoid her. It's awkward and 
and I don't like it. On May 8, 2018, Perry put an end to their feud by extending an olive branch. Literally, she sent Swift an actual olive branch with a note that said, I have been doing some reflecting on past miscommunication and hurt feelings between us. Sexual assault trial and copyright lawsuits. Swift took a break from the spotlight after the massive success of 1989. However, she resurfaced in August 2017 when she testified in a trial against David Moeller. A former radio DJ she had accused of grouping her in 2010. Moela denied Swift's allegations and said the incident cost him his job which led him to sue Swift, her mother and a radio station employee in 2015. Swift countersued him for alleged assault and battery and a jury ruled in her favor in 2017, awarding her $1 in damages as a symbolic gesture. Swift responded to the verdict in a statement, I acknowledge the privilege that I benefit from in life, in society and in my ability to shoulder the enormous cost of defending myself in a trial like this. My hope is to help those whose voices should also be heard. Therefore, I will be making donations in the near future to multiple organizations that help sexual assault victims defend themselves. That year, Swift was also on the receiving end of a lawsuit when two songwriters claimed that she stole the chorus of their song Players Gone Play for her hits Shake It Off. Although a judge dismissed the case in early 2018 on the ground that the allegedly infringed lyrics are short phrases that lack the modicum of originality and creativity required for copyright protection, an appeal court revived the suit in October 2019. Reputation in late August 2017, using an image of a snake, Swift revealed that she would release her sixth studio album, Reputation, in November. The image of a snake is a reference to when Kim Kardashian called Swift a snake on Twitter in 2016, after Swift denied that she granted West permission to use her name in his song Famous. Swift debuted the first single, Look What You Made Me Do, on August 24. In the music video, Swift played characters of all our misrepresentations. The video had more than 19 million views on YouTube within the first day. Days before Reputation's scheduled November 10 release, its secretive track list was leaked to social media. Swift responded by posting the complete list to her Instagram page. Its 15 song, including a collaborative effort with Ed Sheeran and rapper Future, titled Endgame. The two later appeared in the video for the track, which debuted in January 2018. Reputation sold 1.05 million copies in the United States over its first four days. Days, along with giving the artist her fourth consecutive album to surpass 1 million in sales for its opening week. That total made Reputation the top selling album of 2017. Its success continued into 2018, surpassing 2 million in sales while generating the release of seven singles. By the end of the year, Reputation had been honored with favorite pop rock album at the AMAs and top selling album at the Billboard Music Awards. Lover. On April 26, 2019, Swift debuted me with Brandon Yuri of Panic at the disco along with a video of the duo singing and dancing amid the panoply of elaborate sets and swirling colors. It became the first single from her seventh studio album, Lover, with You Need to Calm Down, and the title track also hitting the airwaves as singles over the next few months. In November, Swift claimed a whopping six wins at the American Music Awards, including Artist of the Year and Artist of the Decade Honors, was the only album to sell one million copies in the US in 2019. Swift then managed to grab the headlines once again in February 2020 with the release of the music video for The Man, in which she donned a beard and a suit to take aim at the unchecked behavior of worthy, privileged men. Scooter Braun and Album Ownership In June 2019, Swift revealed 
her dismay that her catalog of music from her first six albums up to Reputation had been sold by her first label to a company owned by Scooter Brown, manager of artists like Bieber and Ariana Grande, and a person she accused of bullying tactics. Scooter has stripped me of my life's work that I was not given an opportunity to buy. She wrote on Tumblr, especially my musical legacy is about to lie in the hands of someone who tried to dismantle it. Just before the August 23rd release of Lover, Swift confirmed she would re-record her old music to regain artistic and financial control of her catalog. Swift's catalog was sold once again in October 2020 to Shamrock Holdings for around $300 million. As you know, for the past year, I have been actively trying to regain ownership of my master recordings. With that goal in mind, my team attempted to enter into negotiations with Scooter Braun. Swift wrote on Twitter, Scooter's team wanted me to sign an ironclad NDA, stating I would never say another word about Scooter Braun unless it was positive. Before we could even look at the financial records of PMLG, which is always the first step in the purchase of this nature, so would have to sign a document that would silence me forever before I could even have a chance to bid on my own work. My legal team said that this is absolutely not normal and they have never seen an NDA like this presented unless it was to silence an assault accuser by paying them off. He would never even quote my team a price. These master recordings were not for sale to me. Swift continued that she is in the process of re-recording her old music. On February 11, 2021, Swift announced that she will release her first re-recorded song, Love Story, at midnight. The song is from her Fearless album and Swift revealed that the full re-recorded album will be released later in 2021. Cats and Miss Americana. In December 2019, Swift was featured a live action adaptation of the famed Broadway musical Cats, along with Jennifer Hudson, James Coden, and Rebel Wilson. She also teamed with Cat creator Andrew Lloyd Webber to write the song Beautiful Ghosts for the film. The chart topping singer then earned solo billing for Miss Americana, a documentary which covered the makings of her recent studio albums as well as other high profile events like her sexual assault trial. Miss Americana premiered at the January 2020 Sundance Film Festival before earning a limited release in theaters and appearing on Netflix. Folklore and Evermore. On July 23, 2020, Swift announced on Instagram that she would be releasing her eighth studio album, Folklore. The 16 track album debuted the next day at midnight. On December 10, 2020, Swift once again announced that she was going to drop a surprise album at midnight titled Evermore. Folklore went on to win Album of the Year at the 2021 Grammys. Swift also made history that year, becoming the only female solo artist to win that award three times. Midnight. Swift released her 10th studio album Midnight at midnight on August 21st, 2022. Three hours later, she released seven extra tracks in a deluxe version titled Midnight 3AM edition. The album broke new grants for the already prolific Swift, making her the first artist to have a song on all of the top 10 slots on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Hi, thanks for watching to the end. I hope this video has been informative and entertaining. If you like this video and you would like to see more contents like this, kindly like, share, leave a comment in the comment section and also please subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed yet. Thanks for watching to the end. Have a nice day and look out for the next video.